Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel. And um, I'm pre-recording this because I just finished this book, but this uh, review will be going up, I think, in early August. So, um, and it's the start of July, so this is going to be like a month away. But anyway, so what did I just recently read and what am I reviewing? I read The Golden Unicorn by Phyllis A. Whitney. And um, this is my second Phyllis A. Whitney, and after I read my first one, The Trembling Hills, which I will link that review down below, I have to say I fell in love with Phyllis A. Whitney after just reading one book and haven't read a second one till you know, just this year. And it's been, what, about two years now? <laughs> so it's been a while, and my Phyllis A. Whitney collection has been growing. I almost feel like I should do an update. If anybody would be interested in an update of my collection, Please feel free to let me know, and I will film one. But uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and read the synopsis uh, that they have for this book. When her adoptive parents die in a train crash in Italy, writer Courtney Marsh becomes more determined than ever to find her roots. She was mysteriously abandoned when she was just an infant, and she never knew the truth about her biological parents. The only clues to her past are a golden unicorn pendant she's had all her life and a tattered newspaper clipping about an artist who hailed from one of the most prominent yet reclusive East Hampton families. Now under the guise of a reporter, Courtney has arrived at the Rhodes Mansion on the dunes. She may be uncertain about her heritage, but she's as sure as the bracing ocean winds that this family is hiding something. Only the handsome son-in-law of the Rhodes clan, whose marriage is on the rocks, is particularly forthcoming, especially as he grows more intimately fond of the lovely and inquisitive young Gust. But the more Courtney discovers, the more she has to fear, because hers is a legacy of murder that has yet to play its final hand. Um, I don't completely agree with that synopsis. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, this book came out in 1976, by the way. Um, so it's definitely way later, about 20 years after the previous book that I read, because The Trembling Hills came out in 1956, so yeah, 20 years later. Um, I don't completely agree with that synopsis in a few little spots. It says, uh, under the guise of a reporter, she is a reporter, uh, and she's, um quite a prolific uh, reporter apparently in New York City when um, she ends up uh, deciding to investigate her roots. So when the book starts, she's already laid out her plan to go and visit this family at their house called The Shingles, which is kind of the, this house. It's not a very gothic looking house, but it definitely has that feel to it because it's kind of oppressive in its atmosphere and... Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a thick atmosphere there. Um, so yeah, um, and there's also a family legend attached to this um, that has to do with that unicorn pendant that she has. And um, as whoever wears that pendant uh, is supposed to be protected. But the legend having to do with unicorns is whoever sees a unicorn on the moon in the family, that is, um, that is either an omen that good fortune will befall them, or disaster. And it definitely uh, plays a prominent role in this book. So, but yeah, this book made me think a lot of, like, Dark Shadows, especially because this girl, orphaned, going out to investigate her past. Uh, unlike Victoria Winters, Victoria Winters never ended up finding out who she was. Courtney Marsh, uh, she has quite a few leads, and, you know, she... Um, I will, this is not much of a spoiler, but she does find out who she is, kind of like in The Trembling Hills, how that main character, she had discovered who she was, too. But there are some twists and turns that I definitely did not see coming with this one, and some that I did, uh, but especially that, that ending. That ending was uh, definitely I did not see coming, and um, there's quite a bit of danger, even, because there's some attempts on her life, a few different ones, and uh, there's also a very saucy 
uh, character named Stacia, she is... <sighs> she's something else. We'll say that, because, gosh, she she's a bit of a brat, but she's, all, she's just really twisted, and it's just like... But anyway, what I rate this book, I rated it four stars. I don't know if I'd say I liked it as much as The Trembling Hills. I did really like it, and it took me a little while because I was reading other things at the time, so I was finishing up um, Grayson's Mate, uh, which I read last month, and so I was reading this one last, last month, but I didn't get to finish it till last night. And um, once I was finally cleared of all those reads, I was finally able to devote more time to this, and I really started getting into it. And, uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it, but I think I might like The Trembling Hills just a little bit better. There is a lot of heart to this book, especially at the ending. There's some really frightening moments to this book and some really weird and creepy imagery in it, especially the, the woman who she goes to interview, uh, the, uh, because that's kind of her excuse for going to investigate. She is doing an article and, inter and wanting to interview this artist who's kind of the matriarch of the family, but she's not the head of the family, but she's like the matriarch figure. Um, but she's also, you know, using this as a way to investigate. This woman is an artist, and she painted um, a picture of a unicorn moon, which um, is part of the newspaper clipping that uh, Courtney finds and, you know, helps leads her along the investigation along with her uh, adopted parents wrote on the side, is this the unicorn in part in Courtney's life? So, um, there's that. And a lot of the, the things that the woman paints, um, her name's Judith, by the way, uh, there's a lot of seascapes and stuff and usually kind of stormy weather and a lot of things with doll heads. There's a lot of freaky things with doll heads and she has a drawer for, full of doll heads and stuff, and, uh, yeah, it, and they're all sorts. It, it is kind of creepy, so there's a lot of weird uh, imagery to it. it. If there had been some, you know, like, scary moments to it, this could have almost been a gothic horror instead of a gothic romance. Well, it could have been both. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this book and really got into it, so, um, definitely read more Phyllis A. Whitney. I mean, I have a bunch of her books, um, but yeah. Anyway, that is my review. I hope everybody's having a great August and had a great July. Um, anyway, until next time, stay safe, stay spooky, happy summer, and until next time.